friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Tori and today we're gonna talk about all of the books that I read in July 2023. All right, so like I said in my August TBR, July was a bit crazy in my personal life and I'm really proud of the amount of reading I got done honestly, considering all of that. Um, but I had all in all a really good reading month. I finished a book that has been on my reading, currently reading list for quite a while. I read, reread an old favorite, discovered a new favorite, all of the things. So it's been a really interesting month and a really good month and I'm really excited to talk to you about these books. So without further ado, let's get into it. Book one that I read at the very beginning of July was A Deed of Dreadful Note by my friend Patricia Meredith. This is a cozy murder mystery indie novel that is fantastic. Patricia has such a gift with cozy stories that also, oh by the way, there's a dead body, which is what I said in my review of this. Um, this book particularly has been a huge passion project for her because it details in fictitious form with historical reference the life of Anna Catherine Green, who is considered by many people to be the mother of the modern detective novel. Um, and she predated people like Arthur Conan Doyle and Agatha Christie. So she wrote a book called The Leavenworth Case that was a detective novel. And Patricia wrote A Deed of Dreadful Note that kind of details Anna's life alongside her writing her first detective novel. And once again, the characters alongside the mystery element are just so well done. I really enjoy Patricia's writing style and I'm kind of at a point where I will read anything she writes because it's just, man, I didn't think cozy murder mystery was a thing that I would like to read, but Patricia has definitely made a convert of me and I'm very excited to see where she goes with the rest of this series. Next up, I swerved away into some lit fic, and this is When the Emperor Was Divine by Julie Atsuka. This book details the story of a family who is Japanese-American during the aftermath of World War II. And what I liked about this one a lot is a lot of the stories focus on the soldiers or the Japanese-American men who were taken to different camps and things like that. This one follows the family of one of those men that was taken and their journey to being taken away from their home and all of this stuff. And it follows the mother and two children through the story. And it is like any book around this time period with this topic. It is very difficult to read in some aspects. It did a great job of having that gritty daily life feel despite the horrific things that this family was going through and it really really sucked you in and just made you feel like you were right in the middle of this family who was trying to achieve some sense of normalcy after being divided and taken away from their home and treated horribly so um, you kind of get a little bit of coming of age with the children as they're growing up through this, ex this experience and seeing the way that it changes them, the way that it changes the mother. It was a really interesting read and it's obviously very short. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite in this topical area that I've read, but I definitely really enjoyed it. I definitely think if this is a era of history that appeals to you, that this is, I mean, really what can you lose? It's a very short book and I think she packs a lot into a short amount of pages. Next up, I finished a book that I have been slowly reading over the last three months and the slowly part has absolutely nothing to do with the book itself. I started this as an audiobook and the audiobook is good and I really enjoyed the beginning of my experience with the audiobook. I really really enjoyed my experience with the beginning of this audiobook and I really chalk this up to just me and audiobooks 
needing to work on a relationship. I'm having a hard time with it. And that's a me thing, not the book thing. And I actually very much give kudos to this book for keeping me in the audiobook as long as it did. I read over half this book in audio, which for me is a major achievement. So accepting our victories. I finished the book in the physical format once I was ge very generously sent a review copy. So it's Heliotrope by Palmer Pickering. And this book, as you can see, is a chonky boy. Um, this book is very much a classic epic fantasy that is intimately character focused and kind of melds the coming of age story with grizzled warrior. There's a little bit of that lone wolf and cub kind of vibe to it, which is really cool. It also includes a very heavy found family aspect. This group of main characters that kind of become a makeshift family out of necessity and survival. I do think that this book was a little bit longer than I would have liked it to be. I don't know that it needed to be as long as it was. And I do think that there were some things that pulled me specifically out of the book in terms of vocabulary words used in a more old fantasy setting, which is something that I always really struggle with. The one thing that I think I've mentioned quite a few times on the channel when I talk about this book, and I will say it again because it deserves it, is that the opening chapter of this book is quite possibly one of my favorite opening chapters I've ever read in fantasy. I don't want to spoil too much of it for you to have the full experience, but it's a it's a it's a craftsman doing his craft and the way it's described and just this entrance into the world is so beautiful and to me that's what classic epic fantasy slow burn fantasy really looks like when it's done well. The magic system I also found really unique and interesting and really liked a lot of the things that Palmer was exploring in this book in terms of the magic system. It took me entirely too long to read this book and that is no fault of the books. Next up, I finally, finally, you guys can stop yelling at me about this now. Um, Red Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is book one in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And I literally just filmed a video talking about my experience reading this. This is my first reread of this book in 12 years. So I first read it back when I was in college and I had no idea what was going on back then. Who I procrastinated on this one. I procrastinated on it so much because of that fear of going back into a series that you haven't read for a really long time. And it's really scary because you don't know what this new experience is going to be like with the series, especially when there's been that much time elapsed between the original reading. I knew that I was in safe hands because honestly, no series that that has kept this level of influence and meaning to me as a reader and a writer could ever possibly not have a good experience again. I mean, maybe that's not true. I'm sure there are books out there that we reread later on and we're like, yeah, maybe not as good as I thought it was, but not so with this series. Oh my goodness. More on that in the dedicated video that I made about that experience, but I think one of the things I'll reiterate here that I say in that video is that I think that we should be really careful not to lose this amazing series within the discourse of how intimidated people are by it. That is something that I really wanted to get across in talking about my reread of this story, because I think whenever we talk about Malazan, that's usually the topic that comes up first is, oh, it's so difficult and I'm so intimidated by it and you really should, you know, it's better on a reread and, you know, all the things, all the talking points. I don't think people should be as intimidated about this series as they are. If I can read it, I promise you can read it. All right, next up we have The Spider Key by Jacqueline Hagen. This book, okay. So as you guys know, I started my journey with this series by taste testing the first chapter of the Wickwire Watch, courtesy of the encouragement of my friend Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads back a while ago and I was taste testing a bunch of first chapters from um, books that are entrance in the self-published fantasy blog off competition right now 
and really was impressed by the first chapter read of The Wickwire Watch. So I read The Wickwire Watch in June and then I picked up The Spider Key in July. And when I tell you that Jacqueline just upped the ante in every possible way in book two. Okay, so <laughs> this book, you guys, I've been telling you in, you can watch my video review up here. I've been telling you guys, this is a debut. This is a debut. This is going to be an incredible magnum opus for Jackie, and it's her first series ever. Like, that's... I'm very impressed. This book is so good. There's so many incredibly endearing characters. There's an air of mystery. There's coming of age. There's found family. You've got kind of the gas lamp steampunk aspect of it also mingled with enchantments and magic and the supernatural emotionally based magic system and just it's so good it really has me incredibly emotionally invested and that is something that always is high marks for me because who this book and the ending i'm still i'm still processing the ending of this book if you know you know those of the few of you that have read it with me i have the third book coming to my house tomorrow and it is going to take every ounce of willpower i have not to just throw everything out on my tbr and go straight into reading it <sighs> jackie why do you do this to me i know you're watching anyways um, if you haven't already picked up The Wickwire Watch, please do, because it's excellent. And if you want more information about my thoughts, go watch my author interview with Jackie or my dedicated video review for The Wickwire Watch. Okay, so this month I did have one book that I DNF'd, and that was A Low Country by Morgan Shank. This is another entrant in the self-published fantasy blog-off competition. This one is a fantasy western kind of revenge or rescue story. And for me personally, the beginning of the book just really didn't pull me in as much as I was hoping it was going to. And some of the description of the romantic love interest in the beginning of this book just really didn't jive with me. So I would encourage all of you guys to go check out the blurb on this book and some of the other reviews on it so that you can decide if it is a good fit for you or not. So that was my month of reading and I'm really proud of myself for reading as much as I did considering everything. And I'm really looking forward to going into August. I have another group of great books coming up this month as you guys saw in my TBR video. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know if you've read any of these, what your experience was with them. Please let me know down in the comments so we can chat about it. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, please go check that out down in the links below. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a fantastic week with five star reads and I will see you in the next video.